Okay. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to July 13th, 2017 Planning Board meeting. Um, the only thing we have on the agenda is discussing subdivision regulation changes. And a month ago we went through active and substantial. And I emailed everybody what I think we talked about, agreed to, whatever you want to call it. There's an uh, extra copy. Oh boy. Can you, can you make copies, Jen? Sure. Some oh, well, it's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> if it was that easy, I could do it. Find the machine? Sure, yeah. Oh, I can find the machine. You don't need a code to get rid of that system. Oh, I did? Yeah. No codes? Have you got copies, John? In here. Oh, in here. Okay. If I can find it. You're nice. Okay. Is that what it was? Somewhere around there. That's the one you always have trouble getting. I sent to there. Oh, All right. That's right. That's right. If you want, Bruce, tomorrow night after work, weather permitting, I'll see if I can give you some more pictures of the garage for an update. Yeah, because all the freckles do it. The front is looking up tomorrow. All right. We more today. I didn't receive it. I didn't read it. I don't know where it went. I couldn't find it. Oh, all right. I read it. When that building gets expanded, which way does it get expanded? Towards, towards the, the woods yeah. or towards the road? Towards the woods. And the ground there is capable? Yeah. Not small? Yeah. It's not a well, It's not a runoff area yeah. from the woods? Yeah, I couldn't get into the, yeah. the link you sent me. That looks like it's your no, link. But I tried logging in and just kept bringing me to my companies. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Now, this is slightly different than the one you emailed us. It is? Yes. This is the one you emailed us. I put that off the email. I'm looking at the email and it's different. Those two. The first thing I noticed is you got you drew lines on this one. Yeah, this one's on one. Oh, I flipped through that one away. I didn't copy that one. Then there was another one he emailed. Oh, no, that there was a doc, there was a word file. That one of the lines was a PDF. And then you oh. got the word file. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So I'll ignore this one with it. Because Neil, Neil can't open a PDF like this. Which I don't understand, but that's okay. Without the lines. Yeah, there's no lines. The word file. Oh. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> to refresh everybody's memory, we have a definition for active and substantial and a different and another definition for substantial completion. Active and substantial per RSA 670, whatever, 39, 674, 39, has to be done within two years. Substantial completion of the improvements has to be done in five years. Either one creates vesting for the subdivision. Either or, not an not in and. So we discussed last week about how much would have to be done in the two-year period for active substantial? I think we kind of came to the census I have written down here. Of course, I haven't read it for almost a month either, so. And that A? Yeah, is there a, which, which one's the typo? 30 or 20? I think we agreed to 30. I think so. Great. Yes. What happens if the subdivision only has a 600-foot road? You got to go to the But you can't do it legally based on the definition you have in the first three lines. You might want to add some language or the entire length of the road if it's less than 800 feet. Hmm. 
So you told me to go eight or four over there. <laughs> At least eight hundred foot. <laughs> eight hundred one feet. Um, what happens if the development is phased? I don't think it matters. I, I agree with you because it seems to think, say, the entire subdivision plan. Yes. And the entire subdivision plan would include the phases. Yes. So if, if this is a five-phase plan over, I'm making up a number, 10 years, and I don't know if it could be, um, and there were 2,000 feet of road, you would have to have 800 feet of road built, which could be more than the entire length of the road necessary for phase one, and could yes. be part of the road into phase two. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, we try to go back. Say that again, Neil, because I, I want to make sure I understood what you just said. You have a, a subdivision that's subject to phasing. Yep. I don't know if that's going to still happen. But okay. Assuming it did. Yep. And you got 2,000 feet of road. Overall, first, from beginning 400 here. in the first phase, 400 second phase, okay. and so forth. Yep. According to this, you would have to build 800 feet of road. Or 30%. Well, 800 feet is greater than 30%. You have to do the greater of the two. Okay, yep. Okay. You have to build 800 feet, which means you're building more road than the entire first phase requires. Okay, okay, and, now I see what you're saying. Okay. And in this case, our numbers, all of the second phase road. And I just wanted to make sure that Craig intended that, because that's gotcha. what it says. Yep. And he said yes. Makes sense. But I would agree with that. Not 30% not or 800 of the first phase. Correct. Overall, the entire project. It's not, it's, it's not, yeah. Um, but Craig. The phasing doesn't matter for that. Can, yes. Um, just to make sure, again, I understand it. Third line from the bottom on paragraph A, starting with measures, comma. Yes. Should you put an and there? <clears throat> and and then after lot lines, a semicolon, so that it reads, uh, the construction of 30% has been, has been constructed to, through binder course, sufficient to cause eligibility for certificates of occupancy occupancy for structures on those houses, completion of erosion control measures, and utilities installed to those lot lines. And, in effect, in addition, financial guarantees remain on the deposit to ensure completion of the remaining improvements. I'm trying to make sure that there are three things that, that you're intending, that there be three things that have to do with the road. The road has to be sufficiently constructed to cause eligibility for certificates of occupancy. It has to be sufficiently constructed so that you can complete erosion control measures. and has to be sufficiently constructed so that utilities can be installed to lot lines. Those are the three things you're saying that, have to, that, that are standards that the road has to meet. Yes, but I'm saying there's four standards to be met to get but that's back to a substantial. But the financial guarantees are unrelated to the road. The financial guarantees remain on deposit completion of the remaining improvements, which would mean the remaining road, the remaining uh, utilities if they're going underground. Uh, mean mean the wearing course, it would mean sure every, everything. Right. But the point is that's in, independent of and goes beyond the first three things, which are really helping people understand what you mean by constructing a road to through binder course because doing that whatever else that means it has to be sufficient to get a CO has to be sufficient to complete erosion controls and has to be sufficient so utilities can be run those are the three things you're saying are the criteria to determine whether the road was constructed properly to the binder course of hot by two minutes payment. If that's not what you mean, then we need to reword this. Okay. 
fact, I think you probably ought to put a period after lot lines and strike the word and and say, in addition, financial guarantees must remain on deposit with the town to ensure completion of remaining improvements. I like that better than your semicolon idea. Okay. But I'm not an English major, so I would defer, well, no, I would, I would defer to almost anybody for that one. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't I just simplify and just do bullet points, or can you not do that? Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. The following, the that? following need to be the following, whatever need to be accomplished, and yep. one, two, three, and four, and then at the bottom, financial guarantees will remain on deposit with the town to ensure completion of remaining improvements. The financial guarantees. It's a lot easier for me to type period than change the word and to in addition. And, and, and it gives us a period and just change the word and to additionally. Okay. Additionally, comma financial guarantees. Yeah. Thank must you. remain on deposit, or shall remain on deposit. You have to put the word shall or must in there. Otherwise, it's not shall. a complete sentence. Okay. And then you have to, and you're going to put an and before the word utilities. Suddenly, I'm doing a lot more typing. And taking out that comma, then? You, that's irrelevant. But yes, you can take that out. That's, that's the Oxford one, isn't it? No. No? No. That, there are different ways to do that. So I'm going to add and after the word measure. I'm going to put a period after lot lines. I'm going to erase and put in additionally comma. Financially, financial guarantees shall remain on deposit with the town to ensure completion of remaining improvements. Yep. I'm going to stick the word all in front of remaining. Sure. Just to make sure we realize we're talking about the entire road, entire subdivision. <coughs> um, I have a quite another question. Why is the is there a a in parenthesis before the words the construction of thirty percent? Oh, I have no idea. Good. Let's just delete it. Okay. There's no B. There's, there's no B. So. And then. The line before that A? The line before that A is, is empty. Well, okay, the line above that empty <laughs> one. <laughs> I'm still stuck on the 30%. There's no I, 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 I. Well, I got, I got an extra. I stuttered for an extra I, 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 I. Is it 3B or 4? It's three. not 4B. 3. Yeah, it's 3. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. How do you comply if the entire subdivision only has 600 feet of road anyway? That's why I'm going to add something in saying, oh. or, the road, or the entire roadway is less than 800 feet. Oh, okay. Neil thought of that one. So if somebody complies with this, they don't have to worry about two. You know Correct. What I'm okay. They're vested. I think I'll have to read these minutes very carefully. You said active and substantial has to be done within two years, correct? Correct. Where, Where does it say that the statute says that? Where does it say that the statute says that in, in 674.39.3? Where, where does it say that or should it be defined in here? Active, active and substantial. Within two years, comma, the construction of whatever. Just so it clearly states what the timeline expectations are. Because that may be common knowledge for people in your field. The planning board, this is three, the planning board may as a part of its subdivision and site plan regulations or as a condition of subdivision flat or site plan approval specify the threshold levels of work that shall constitute the following terms with due regard to the scope and details of a particular project. A, substantial completion, blah, 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 and B, active and substantial development. However, if you back up to 674 colon 391 A, that's where it says 24 months. Active. 39 A? Yeah. Let's see. It says, uh, exempted for five years 
after the date of approval, provided that A, active and substantial development or building has begun on the site by the owner or the owner's successive interest in accordance with the approved subdivision plat within 24 months of the date of approval. Okay. It has to be started or it has to be completed? No, it has to be done. Per our definition. Huh? Act of substantial for that definition. It has to be completed. Yes. Well, With, within 24 months th based on... This much has to be done. Yes. 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 Okay. So you got two bites of the apple here. Right? Yeah. Right. You got, you got two ways of getting invested. Should it reference... Uh, what was it? Six, was it 684... What was it, the reference? 1A. 1A. Should I reference that up at the top? Just so that somewhere on here in the future or whoever comes forward, they can go and say, this is this is the time you have to work with. And if you reference it specifically to the RSA, then if the RSA changes, nothing, we don't have to do anything on our side. I'm just thinking from a clarity standpoint. Yeah, top one pursuant to the authority, you can go 674 39 colon 1A and 3. Or just 674 colon 39. You take the three out of that part there. Yeah. Take the three out. And then 674.39, that covers the time frame and yes, everything else. Yes, covers everything. Okay, that good, way. good idea. Yes, because three talks about the planning board may define it. So under, under one, that should be the three B should be there. Down the next one down, substantial completion. That should say three A instead of three B. Right? Yep, I just caught that. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to it. I don't know why. Why did we do it? You know, whatever. Well, how does um, number two stand up to uh, phasing? Make no difference. Nope. Okay. So even if it's phased, they have to have all the phasing complete. What does 800 feet of linear road cost? Yep. Unless they meet. Yeah. Right. Well, if they don't do anything. They don't pave. Yeah. If, nobody, if they don't, if they don't pave anything in two years, yeah. they, they better be planning on paving everything in five. Yeah, just the virtual field with no drainage required. And, have, and have, have a bond in place for the rest of it. It's $100 for the rest of the work. You have all kinds of drainage yeah. structures and retention ponds all Yeah, I noticed in some of the older, it's closer to more verbiage we have you have to have solvable so it's one hundred twenty thousand dollars quite a fine yeah you see right. that yeah i did yeah. over 800 feet 20 percent why why i don't know i'm just <laughs> saying i saw that it didn't look like it would be quite a burden if things weren't going well if you didn't know what you're, what you're building too yeah now on the last of the page do you want to eliminate that a again no, 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 at the bottom of the page, you need the A, just like you need it. No, no, right here. No. On top of page two. Yeah. Yes. Hey, do you want to re make two, one, and one, two, right there? Since A, three, cut, A cut is paste, two. move. Because <laughs> <laughs> this one's slightly. Since it's, yeah, it would make sense. A and this one's B. So I can put A before B. Well, except active substantial happens first. I know. I don't care. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna leave it alone. It doesn't matter. Um, Craig, under on substantial completion. Yes. You have a different definition of binder course than you do in active and substantial. Why? In active and substantial, you say sufficient um find a course of hot bituminous sufficient to cause eligibility for co's etc and here you just say at a minimum binder course 
In other words, if I were reading this, I would say I, have I gotta do a I I gotta develop my binder course road up to a higher standard under number one, active and substantial, than I do for substantial completion under two. Because presumably, since you didn't put them in, I don't have to worry about whether the binder pavement is sufficient to cause eligibility for certificates of occupancy, completion of erosion controls, mm -hmm. or utilities installed to lot lines. That's what it says. It was not intended, I don't think. Well, and, and utilities installed to the lot lines is a pretty major thing. It seems to me what you're saying under number two is the same thing that you're saying under one, but you're eliminating the 30% requirement. Yeah, two, the road has to be done to bind the course. You don't so have those same thing. standards, yeah. and you have to provide um, financial guarantees. guarantees. You don't have the 30% option anymore. Right. Or the 800 foot option anymore. That's so, all we know. So basically what we're saying is that if you're going to qualify for vesting under um, substantial completion, you've got to get all your roads in completely. Mm -hmm. What about underground utilities? Yeah. Well, under active substantial it's listed. No, yeah, but it only says... To the lot lines. No. Sufficient to cause eligibility... No, yes, you're right. Utilities installed to the lot line. So, if... No. That's not the way I read it. Yeah, I'm having second thoughts on the that. The way too. I read it is sufficient to cause eligibility for certificates of occupancy. And then I would also keep that word sufficient, completion of erosion control measures, and sufficient enough to have utilities installed to the lot lines. I, I agree with you, John. I think that's the way that's that's the way that, I could interpret it. That's the way I read it. What? <laughs> <laughs> what what John is saying is that the way we've written uh, number one, active and substantial, the road has to be completed for, uh, through to the binder course of hot bituminous pavement. Yes, one. Sufficient right. enough to install utilities to the lot line. Right. You don't have to install the utilities under this language, but the road has to be done to okay. a point where you could install utilities without further road work. If that's not what you mean, I don't know why you're interpreting it that way. Because that's what it says. Doesn't the comma no, no semicolon? It's do, a comma. Doesn't the comma after pavement and the comma the, after lots? The so sufficient the, part you only have applies to, you have to the COs. You no. have to you have to put a binder course down one. You have to put erosion control two, and you have to have the utilities three. For simplicity, go back to bullet points. Huh? No. The sufficient part really only applies. You have to a word document email to you, right? <laughs> Most likely, yes. <laughs> I'm just thinking the way the way it's written out here, I could interpret it as sufficient to get utilities installed to the lot, to the lot lines. No, the word sufficient only applies to the eligibility for COs. Okay, so here's here's what that's we're what saying. I mean, that's the way I interpret it. Here's what we're saying, I think. If it was a semicolon, it'd be a different story, but with a comma. Has been constructed through to the bind deck. Uh, sorry. Comma's like making a list. So this really should say A, one, we put the A, the A in parentheses back. A, the construction of 30% of length of road, etc., as shown on the subdivision plan has been constructed through to bind a course of hot bituminous pavement sufficient to cause eligibility for certificates of occupancy for structures on the lot. B, completion of erosion control measures. That, that has nothing to do with the road, although it could be related to the road. And C, utilities installed to the lot lines. And then D, D. financial. No, and then new paragraph. Well, you, I guess you could say yeah, D. D. Additionally, financial guarantees must remain on deposit with the town. If you if you did that, then it would be clear that there are four things that you have to do. You have to put the road in. You have to complete erosion control measures, and you have to have utilities installed. 
And you have to have guarantees. From a, from a clarity standpoint, I think that's the best way. Yep. Is that what you mean, Craig? Yes. Yes, it's simply what you mean. Yeah. Except yeah. I've scribbled all of this one in red. Now I have to throw it away and start all over again. You have an extra copy. Yes, I know. <laughs> I just picked that up. <laughs> well, if that's the case, then, then strike the word additionally before financial guarantees. It's not there anymore. I picked up a clean copy. Okay. <laughs> because if, it, cause if it's, it's on bullet point or, or sub with the letter D, I don't think you need the word additionally. No. But then you... Do you disagree, Neil? You? No, I would. You're a lot more educated than I am. So. <laughs> I, I would just say, after each of the A, B, C, and D, I put a semicolon, and then before the final D, I, get, I, I agree with you, get rid of additionally. But you okay. reinsert the and. B back, back way up, I'm putting a s colon after a subdivision plan? No. Put a, keep the A in, as yep. originally there. Put a colon after lots semicolon after, after lots. lots then put in a B in parenthesis before the word completion on the next line after the first word measures change the comma to a semicolon and insert C in parenthesis before the word utilities isn't isn't that putting B and C? I see what you're saying, I guess. Wow. A is construction of the road. B is completion of, of erosion control measures. C is utilities installed. And then after the word lot lines, put in a semicolon. Keep the word and. And then insert a D in parenthesis before the word financial and then insert the word shall before the word remain. Oh, and insert the word all between of and remaining. That's the one that you wanted to take. Yeah. somebody's going to make a motion, I assume at some point. Are we there yet? Today? Today. No, that no we don't have to make a motion until we're... Don't we have to prepare something for a public hearing? We want to have it in the final form. One more go <coughs> before public hearing, I think. I think we ought to have one more go because we're going to add roadway stuff in there. I got the monument stuff that I typed up in there. I still have to hear back. I sent that bond estimate sheet we have at the back to Steve Keats to get updated because our prices are probably 20 years old. Okay. okay. Uh, all those little things. But it should be in the minutes. How we just discussed it? Yes. Okay, I have it. So. Not the earlier discussion. No. Just <laughs> we changed our minds. Yeah. the final discussion. The final discussion for today. That doesn't mean it's... Mm -hmm. not there. Yeah. So then I can just copy clip most of that stuff into... Under substantial completion. That's what I would do. It's, it, it, substantial completion is the exact same thing. Except I'm taking out the 30% and the 800 feet. Again, making it 100%. Right. Yeah. That was easy. So I'm, I'm going to ask a silly question. Just because I know this happens very quite often. Doing underground utilities, you put the tr you dig the trench, you put the pipes in for the utilities to be pulled. You have a little string through the through the pipe, so the utilities can be pulled later. The EverSource, Comcast, Bruce is kind of smiling, and this, everybody else comes in and pulls their utilities through the line. Are 
is utilities installed means the cable has been pulled through the no pipe? The conduits are in and the pads are in place. What happens if these because are not going to be underground, but the utilities are going to be above ground? I think somewhere else we say they have to be underground. I'm zoning, I think. I thought we changed that a long time ago. I think you're right. I hope we did. If we didn't, we will. Either way. I think at a minimum power. I think at a minimum power ought to be there, but cable, no, because I don't want cable at my house. What, what if they live? What if they live in an area that Comcast won't serve because it's too? Well, far. they got the mains and the transformers in. They don't need to have all the offsets pulled into the lot line because they don't want to put pull those wires in until they can hook the house up at the transformer. So if you get the main line running down the street and the transformer sitting there. Power's to the lot line and the transformer. The pipe, you haven't got power to the lot line, you get the pipe to the lot line. But you haven't pulled it yet. But you haven't pulled it yet. <coughs> to me, this means it's been pulled. Yeah. I, I would read it that I have electricity either in a box or at a pole on my house lot. Running, running down the road, there is utilities. Right, but it's also connected to a box, not just... I have to go out well, the yeah. street. Right. But there's a box on, on my lot. No. They don't put the boxes on your lot. No, the boxes the the right bo away. boxes are right away at the lot line. What do you mean at the lot line? Literally abutting my lot line? That. So they come off that box and serve both houses. Okay. If Underground. Well, either way. If that's what they do. What do you want to have happen when you use the word the language utilities installed to the lot lines? I'm, I'm bringing it up because I'm asking you. As the, way, the, word. the way I would interpret this as a layman is that this means that not only are the conduits there, but the power is there no, and, they the, won't, they won't and the that. cable is there. They won't do that. How are they going to protect their cable? They can't splice it in the pipe. They, they, they can't splice the cable in the pipe. All the connections are made up at the transformer. Where's right the out. transformer? Out in the street. In the box? Yes. Yes. The, 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 box, the, box, the box is a transformer. So wouldn't they put the transformer there and run their connection to it? When they build the house, then they run the wire to the transformer. I guess I'm, I'm saying, do we want the blue line with power in it? What, the blue line is in the street. Yes. yes. We definitely want the blue line with power. I mean, this is what the language says to me, that that blue line has power. But not necessarily that red line. They won't put power no, on red that line. Absolutely there. not. Okay. <clears throat> is that what we're intending? If we had above ground, would... Yeah, same thing, the poles at the lot line. They get the the pole would be there, but would the lines be run? Yeah. Down the street. The, right. So on then, the yeah, top? it'd be the same. I'd want it to be the same. So, so if we don't have underground lines, the way this is set up, the road is paved, the utility company puts up a pole. Mm -hmm. Each pole has a wire has wires connected to it right. for cable and for electricity. Not necessarily cable because we'll say at least power. Well, that's not what this says. This says utilities, which includes cable and telephone. If, if you're doing a subdivision, you're going to put cable in. If cable, you may not, If you, cable's available. Yes. You may. You if you don't want your house, they don't have to run to your house. Yeah. But, but all utilities, whatever they are at the time the subdivision goes in, would be in going to that box. So well, there's, there's different boxes. There's a yeah, there telephone is. pedestal, a cable pedestal the, next to that box. <coughs> the big green one, the big green one's the electric one, then there's a little round one that's the cable, another little wide one's the telephone. That are in the right of way. Yes. yes. They should have drawn to a different scale, but they're typically like there and there. But right now, if this were not underground, the pole would be there and connected and to all the, the wires, would be wires yep. for cable, wires for telephone, and wires for electricity. With no drops. Yes. Right. With nothing going to house. With right. nothing and going. That's what we're asking for here. 
This language says we would have to do that whether they're poles or underground. And actually, if you're doing underground, they're going to put the transformers in too. But if they're going poles, they don't put the transformers on until there's a call for it. So what if you took out the word lines in, in lots and, and just put utilities, utilities installed to the lot instead of lot lines? Now it's not specific to a line. Now it's just to the lot. So it, you'll have that one junction box that's going to split off to two different properties. Does it be, Do you think it makes a difference whether that word is there? To me, no, but to the future, Lord, maybe. I, I don't see how it matters. To the lot line is a specific thing, whereas to the lot is a generic thing, the way I read it. I guess completely cross out to the lot lines, period. Utilities installed, period. Yeah, but that, see, now you're creating problems. No, that's, not, not that's in that the road. Means. That's in the right away. This is all for right away work. This whole thing is right away. There isn't anything on here that's describing anything other than improvements that's done off site. It's all. How about all utilities installed in the right away? Yeah, within right away, yeah. Instead of lot lines, but right away. And what difference will that make to the homeowner? Because then he can run his utilities off to the right away. I know a certain certain subdivision that well, I know lots of subdivisions where the road, the ever source pull on the power, the cable pull on the power, all those kind of things is not included in the road builder's price. They build the road, the conduits are laid, the transformer, the concrete for the transformers there, and they're done. It's up to the lot owner to run. It's up, conduit. To, the, up to the developer to run the conduit. Well, the conduit usually usually road guy do the con all the conduit work. Yeah, but the pipe is there. The pipe is there. Right, so but the, but the cable is not pulled through it. Right. Whatever you're going to call it. Right. There's actually duct tape over top of the top of it. Yeah. And that's it for years. People have bought lots and all of a sudden, oh my God. I know it's happened several times in several subdivisions. As a, as a lot purchaser, does your language, utilities in the right of way, Give you know me greater flexibility in how, terms of where how about I site. How about if we do this correct? I don't know. But Neil speaking. I'm oh, sorry. You know <laughs> <laughs> From the lot owner's and lot purchaser's point of view, does he have more options if the utilities are, if our language says the utilities have to be run in the right of way so that when he decides, oh, I'm going to put my house here, but I'd like the transformer and all of those things over there. No. That's every source says the transformer is going to be there. That's all there is to it. Craig said to set of plans to every source yeah. before he finishes the plans and they mark up the plans where they want everything. They engineer all that and yep. bring it in the room. There's no changing it after that. Every source decides all that. So who's going to bear the cost? Once the utilities are in there, I assume now we're just talking about a conduit with three cables in there, electric, telephone, and cable TV. And that cable is running by my house. Yep. Somebody's got to get into that conduit, cut the conduit, cut the cable. No. So, no, no. All the risers in there. And every lot. There's the utility box. You don't have to cut it. You hook onto it. So when they install that, they know where the lots are, and they put in, in the right of way, Yes. Where they want to, all of the, so that the an electrician coming in, no, they're supposed to have to do it to connect the house yes. to the box. Yes. Yeah. Oh, electrician, electrician can't touch between them. Meter. Oh, the electrician goes to the meter. From the meter to out to the street is all utility company. But yes, you would have power available at your lot line. So you would have power available for your lot. That's your question. Okay. So to, to achieve this, what language do we need to put in here? I say take out to the lot, to the lot lines that in, in the right of way. You, you Utilities installed, installed in the right of way. Yes. And, and energized. What did you say? And energized. I mean, they're live. Would they ever install them not energized? Ever source. That sounds weird. 
that, that, would, that makes the whole system get built. Okay. Because they won't energize it unless it's all built. Okay. Will they, will they energize it for the 30%? Yeah, if, someone, if someone wants to get a CO, they need to. It needs to be energized to get a CO. Because power has to be able to help. And energize is a word that applies not only to electricity, but to telephone and cable. Yep. <coughs> would, would they energize if nobody's building a house? If no one needed a CO? Yes, nobody's building anything. Yeah, they energize it because we're only energizing main line. This, the way we've set it up now, with your language, requires them to energize it even if I don't build for years. Right. Which is what Craig is saying because what happens is the cost of putting them up the utilities is pretty substantial these days. That's so I'm wondering if we want to make them spend, spend that money. Yeah, but in the situation like you have, like you explained, where all the pipes are pulled, all the pads are there, all the, but there's yeah. nothing in them. Right, nothing in them. And the guy's selling individual, lost individual people. Now who pays to get the thing installed and energized? And the two inside, oh, the developer did, pull, did pay it, but it, did, it yeah. took a little time and generators run for quite a bit longer than it should have been. Yeah, but what if the developer was... Bankrupt. Yeah. No, right. I, think, I think we're right by saying they have to be in and energized, even if they're sitting around for a while. That protects everybody. It also may provide, and it may, I don't know, provide. If the guy's going that far, hopefully he wants to see just that building a couple houses. Well, if he isn't, he'll wait the five years and, you know, finish his roads. You know, if it's a long term project, you know, you don't have to pay for it all at once, public service does payment plans, even for, for doing that. So it's not a, a few of my clients have purposely met the act of substantial development. And then stopped. And let it sit. Especially in the last five, six years. I mean, I don't care. I mean, they don't energize. Yeah. If, if, if. And energized. In, in the roadway and energized. In the right of way, not in the roadway. Now. You thought he's within the right of way installed and energized? Energized and installed in the right of way and energized. Well, legally, the roadway is 50 feet wide, but okay, I'll go along with that. The roadway is not 50 feet wide. Yes. The right of way is 50 feet wide. The Legal. roadway is 22 feet. Le legally, the roadway is 50 feet wide. Are you sure? Boundary law, certainly. I thought there's a difference between the right of way and a roadway. A roadway is the paved or surface plus shoulders. I won't get into that. I'll, I'll put in right away. Everybody knows what we mean either way. <laughs> okay, so now it's going to say utilities installed in the right of way and energized. Semicolon and D, etc. Agreed? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you reread A? Well, no, I have, I thought you said something about 30%. Is it pretty much the same it's as identical. what it says there? It's identical, except after the word, 30. whichever is greater, Craig is going to insert for the entire length of road if less than 800 feet. He's leaving whichever is greater? Correct. And adding? Or the entire length of road. I was going to take out the, the dash and put or the entire, I was going to say roadway, if less than 800 feet. That's shown on the entire subdivision plan. That's what I was planning on doing. Then I'm going to take that whole thing under A. A, B, C, D, and D. Copy, clip it, and paste it under two. And I'm going to change. I'm going to say the construction of the entire roadway, as shown on the subdivision plan. Then A, B, C, D, or the B, C, D, E. Under two. Yes, 
under 2. Anything else? That was easy. So are you leaving? Am I leaving? No. Are you leaving too? <laughs> <laughs> he knew he hasn't made his motion again yet. <laughs> I'm not leaving. So two, substantial completion of the improvements and blah, blah, blah. That stays the same. That stays the same. And then, then, then that A is yeah. going to say... The construction of the entire length of roadway as shown in the inside of subdivision plan has been constructed through the binder course. So blah, blah, blah. And that's all saying, and then I'm going to add the rest. I'm going to copy that, mm -hmm. clip it in, mm -hmm. and say the construction of the entire roadway as shown on the entire subdivision plan has been constructed. And then B. B that's your arm? Yeah. What did you do? Have a problem with Legos or something? She, she, she used her 3D printer for the first time. Yeah. Anything else we need to talk about? Uh, yes. What? Road widths. Well, okay. All right, I'm going to Anything, and you had a whole bunch of other things that you had marked up on your original. Oh, well, geez, I didn't bring all that with me. Good night, Chuck. Good night, sir. Stuff that he had done. <coughs> yes, he did. Interesting. The email dated 10 to 16. Oh, you didn't bring it with you? No. Okay. Could you resend that, Bruce? Yes. And then let's do it the next time. Okay. Because I, I, I thought he had done all the tough work and all we had to do was vote yes. No. We can go for a little bit, but. This one? Yeah. Yeah. I got a table crew, you know, we can cross things out and write different numbers. I mean, you know, pretty much an editing job now. Probably send it that way, everybody's got fresh coffee. Stick another column in there for maximum tangent between curves. I don't like long straight roads. I thought I had done that. The minimum between reverse curves. Why do we want to, just as a general rule, why do we want to set standards so that all the roads have to look the same? That's why I want a maximum tangent between curves. You want to get rid of the bowling alley roads? I don't want, I don't want a long straight road. But, and you don't want the developer to decide what works in his particular... Well, well the developer can, decide, can certainly, and I've done it, Instead of putting a long straight curve, put a very flat radius, let's say 5,000 foot radius, and then put a little curve in to make another 5,000 foot radius. And it looks an awful lot better than a long straight road. And it's practically doing the same thing, but you know what I mean? You zip, zip, and be How about a 10 million mile radius? That work? That'd probably be a little long. <laughs> you may not see that. <laughs> I have done 5,000 foot radius. This is all part of subdivision rights. Yeah. So if somebody's got a real issue where they really can't pull it off because of some feature or something, they can wait. Right. But it's it's not only that. I one of the things that I thought planners have learned 
from the 1940s and 1950s was that regularity results from rigid rules. Yeah, that's what they did in the 70s. Yeah. That's what we're yeah. stuck with where we are today. Right. Postage stamp, <laughs> yeah. postage stamp lots, Levittown type developments. Right. Yep. And today, people want variety and change, right. as Craig said. It, it's not like, bowling out. And it slows traffic down. Yeah. It makes things more scenic. I mean, there's all kinds of pluses for it. So, is that, do you think, what this does? Yes. It, this is not rigid the other way. No. No. Okay. It gives you more flexibility. Well, it forces more foot more. The, 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 the allows was, more flexibility and almost forces you to do that. The way it was before, there was a minimum tangent between curves, so they made you make straight sections of road wherever you could. And was, the result is not good. Okay. So by still, saying maximum, you solved that. Yeah. We still have minimum in here, which we need to talk about too. Right. Okay. But I don't think it's very long, is it? Yeah, 100 feet. If okay. you get over 30 traffic, 30. About well, over 150 traffic trip. Yeah. That was a starting point. But I'll, I'll add the next one. Okay. Uh, if we're doing that at our next meeting, is my motion in order? Are we, oh, are we, are we only talking about subdivision? Yes. Right? Okay. What do you want to talk about? Brought up something at the last meeting. Um, and it was lot size versus. Uh, the zoning. Yeah. The 50 foot roads? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 50 foot road frontage for less than 10 versus. No, 50 feet for more than 50 10. 50 feet for more than 10 versus 250 for less, for less than 10. I think that's just stupid. From a, uh, looking at it from a safety standpoint. You want 250 for all? I think it'd be better if you just made them both the same and maybe just find a happy medium between the two. From a safety standpoint, if you have a, a 10 foot or a 10 plus acre lot and you have a 50 foot frontage. road frontage, yep. that's not a lot. And your drive was only 16 feet wide. Correct. Okay. So if 50 foot sufficient for my thousand acres out there, but I got 250 feet, I think that's crap. Yeah, but what it does, John, is it if, if, if you, you have a two acre lot, you have a two acre lot. I'm, I'm required to have 250 feet of road frontage, right? And I don't think it, from a safety standpoint, it makes absolutely no sense. And, and that, that uh, could you explain the connection between road I, I, frontage I, and safety? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see got the connection either. Well, the, the whole point of to me, road frontage is so you can have. You have plenty of area where you can see that way and you can see that way, that line of sight. I don't know what the proper term is for this. Line of sight. Okay. Um, sight distance. Sight yeah. distance, thank but you. But that has nothing to do with frontage. Right, it has nothing to do with frontage. You could have lots that are five feet wide mm -hmm. on a straight road and you'd have four or five hundred feet line of sight in each direction. You could have a lot that's five hundred feet wide okay. on, a, on an S-shaped road and you wouldn't be able to see beams. But it would only be one driveway. You wouldn't have to worry about other driveways right next to you. Well, it's a zoning order that says you have to have 200 feet of sight distance. Uh, some, uh, something doesn't sit right with me on it. Well, the reason for it, which Bruce was getting ready to go to, mm -hmm. if you're allowing back lots, whether 10 acres, some, some towns allow 5 acres, 10 acres, whatever they are, yep. part of the reasoning is you're eliminating, eliminating Redu reducing, reducing subdivision roads. Yep. The amount of road you need, maintenance for the town, if you have, all that. If you have 20 acres back there and we put in two back lots with 50 feet of frontage, mm -hmm. as a subdivider, a developer, versus building three, 400 feet of road and getting four lots, great. If you can, if you're going you know, to get zero lots for that 100 feet of frontage, they're going to build a road. The town just got two got two more lots and three or four hundred feet of road to maintain. And the developer netted the same thing, or did it develop netted the same thing. So what you're saying is if I have fifty acre back lot with a hundred feet of frontage, I can carve that under our rules into two fifty foot lots. Mm -hmm. The two sorry, two fifty acre lots, each having fifty feet of frontage. Twenty five acre Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Whereas what John wants to have is 
a road that would take up that 50 or 100 foot mm -hmm. frontage and then split off into a subdivision in the back, right. Right. however many lots. If the so what the developer is in a subdivision and he has, like Brookshire, he got a main road in, instead of doing a back, two back lots, he's going to build a road out there and get three or four lots. And why is that bad? We've got, we got, we got more road to maintain and more lots. Provided the town accepts it, but you also got more more tech, it's more beef. Meets yeah, right 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 you have to. No, you can't say no. Okay, but that also means more taxable revenue for the town, does it not? And, and, and more, more expenses more that kids. exceed the amount of taxable revenue. Residential. In, in, in a residential area. I think the kids cost more than they make in taxes, especially on more houses. As houses age, they tend to get less kids in them. <laughs> How many kids you get in your house? It's not the age of the house, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I, I just got a puppy, does that count? It's, it's the age of the occupant. <laughs> <laughs> but his house is really old. <laughs> right, my house was not much younger when I was younger. <laughs> I understand what you're saying, I just I don't agree with it. So okay. That's just my issue, I guess. What it, let's assume that we said all houses have to have a 250 foot front end. Or okay, sure. That's so we eliminate the 50 foot for back lots. Mm -hmm. A developer or a person who owns a back lot can't develop it now using the frontage on the road. Well, they'd what be grandfathered, wouldn't they? No. Why not? Because mm -hmm. you need 250 feet of frontage. But the lot already existed prior to that. You could put one house on it. Okay. The, but the guy wants to put, because he's got 50 acres or whatever it is, he wants to put more than that. So why can't he build a road into the back? Exactly. That's what he will do. Under your scheme, mm -hmm. we will have more roads going to back lots and higher density development of the back lots with a worse impact on town taxation. Under the, as, and I had the same problem that you did when we did this. Under the current situation, with a 50-foot frontage requirement, it's less likely that the developer will put in a road. More likely that he'll take his back lot, split it into two tens or three ten, whatever he needs, mm -hmm. and the the town therefore has a lower burden on its taxes and less obligations to maintain more town road. So, in other words, the practical consequences of what you're doing is a the practical consequences of keeping. The situation is now is B, mm -hmm. and you have to make the decision whether you want A or B. There's no question that if we do what you want, there will be more developed lots in town. Yes. That's, there's no question about that. Mm -hmm. And more work for the town to maintain. Yes. But. Because, because I don't want one house on my back 50, my back 40 acres. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to bring in a road, I'm getting eight lots. Yep. But if you allow me, that costs me money. Mm -hmm. But if you allow me to take that same land and divide it into two, which I can do with my divided driveway on my road and so forth, I won't go for the extra lots because I saved the money on the road. And therefore, the town benefits in two ways, fewer, fewer miles of road to maintain, and fewer children to pay for in school. That's the trade-off. And the other reason for the long, longer frontage is because of aesthetics and, de and density also. So there's two reasons to have for the 250 feet of frontage. We just changed from 200 to 250, not three years ago, four years ago? Four, five years ago. Five years ago, whatever. Just keep the houses further apart. Go back, you're not going to see them driving down the road anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can still agree to disagree. Yeah, I, I just... Keep, John, keep thinking about this because there may be a different way to look at it or another alternative. For, for me, you I decide think what it is you want to accomplish. I'd love to be able to entice more businesses to look at where. If there's about. more population, the businesses will be more apt to look at where. Oh, boy. I got, that's, that's, that's I, got a better, I got a better idea if you try to bring more businesses into where. Let's get a bond so we can put a sewer system in some place to entice some businesses into where. Because that's a lot of the problem with where. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why, why is that? Leech, you buy a commercial land, you're putting a big leach field on it, putting a parking lot on it. What are you doing? It's a huge expense. 
You mean to Walmart food? would come in if we had a town sewer, but not if we don't? I don't I'm not I, using them in particular. I don't know, but I'm sure they're not going to come in with, with, since we don't have sewer, they're not going to come in. I wouldn't think. Does I, water I have sewer up near the market basket? I have no, no idea. Well, I don't know that. I can't imagine. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Companies have been known to come into towns where there's. Okay, towns have been known to get a tip to put in sewer system. <laughs> what's that? What's that? London, Dairy, it? London yeah. Dairy Dairy did it. Yeah. And what happened? It exploded. <laughs> they got Walmarts. But, they got Walmarts, and then they passed in order to no more big box stores in London Dairy. <laughs> but was the explosion due to causes other than the sewer system, or directly related to the sewer system? And it was yeah. coincidental. I think it was coincidental. That and exit four and five, ninety three, of course. Usually, and, and usually population. there's no one thing you can do. No. Usually, it's a whole bunch of things, and for the most part, not in every case, it's things beyond your control. Beyond the control of the town, it's a regional thing. Yep. It's a change in technology. It's a change in transportation. And, and the reason why I bring up the whole business thing, and, and this probably isn't the right venue for it, is just looking through our antiquated master plan. Um, one of the things that was mentioned there is they want to see a retail outlet like a Walgreens or a Wal or not a Walmart, uh, a Rite Aid or CVS or whatever drugstores are out there. Just nobody's coming here, and I don't know what the issue is. I don't even know if it's anything that can be solved at this level. We had a guy try a drugstore at Lancaster Plaza years ago. Plus about two years. Yep. There was a drugstore there? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Couldn't make it. Went out of business. And he went out of town or he yeah. went out of business? I think he went out of business. One in a large box. It was a small operation, but not a business. Now we got a town to the north of us. Granted, they have a large college base during the winter. Um, but they have multiple stores within close proximity. We have, mm -hmm. we have, we don't have multiple stores in close proximity. We don't have anybody clamoring to come here. Well, we don't. From, well, a, from we don't a large have, commercial standpoint. What we don't have is we don't have a zone set up for it either. We, we, why we, would why would that why would a zone entice businesses? Well, businesses draw on other businesses. That's why they clump together. You get a business coming in for a drugstore. If the something, they, they just happen. They feed off each other. You're talking about retail businesses, yes. not <laughs> manufacturing versus retail. Right. And even manufacturing, some manufacturing businesses re rely on other manufacturing businesses to assist them. Like what Chuck does, he, he, he essentially works for. Manufacturing businesses, and he's like a subcontractor for making parts that they don't want to be bothered making. Um, mm -hmm. but, so you need to have something. I mean, Milford did it with Meadow Park Industrial Meadow Meadow Brook Industrial Park up there by Hitchmas. Um, and yet, it takes a pretty good size area. You have to dedicate for that, to, to, and you have to get somebody in there to. to Take a chance to begin with. Mm -hmm. You're talking about an industrial park or any kind, any any kind of zone, whether it be retail or industrial park, they all require the same. They require a pretty good sized chunk of land that where it hasn't got anything near big enough zoned as a contiguous. But, but look what happened in Goffstown. They created their industrial park. I don't know, 20 years ago, maybe more. Yeah. And now they're getting their first tenant. And what's their tenant? Oh well, yeah, but that was that uh, storage that, units. Yeah, but that's that problem where it's too small. That's just a little tiny thing. That's like B and B lane, but smaller. That's even smaller than that. Are you talking down by the shell station? Yeah. No, oh. no, 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 no. This is uh, right by the Goss Manchester Town line. Oh, Gosstown back road. Okay. Yeah. That's too small. That's just a little five watt subdivision where the guy made commercial watts with a radio tower, a TV tower in the middle of it. Okay. I did. I thought that was owned by the town. I didn't know it was a private. Yeah, it's a little subdivision guy did there, about, like I said, 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Golf, Golf Town's trying to figure out what to do with the county land by the prison for years. Hmm. They've had a lot of different wrecks on that, with the word trust, over the years. Trying to figure out what they're going to do with all that. One of, one of the problems for retail in the state is that the demographics are not good. Right. Our, 
population is aging, and generally speaking, older people have already bought what they need and yep. spend a smaller proportion of their income sure. on, Maintenance. on things. Right. Yeah. A lot more medical supplies. That's why you <laughs> see Rite Aid popping up yep. all over. The place. Whereas younger people tend to um, be larger patrons of various retail establishments. Well, I mean, the malls are going to fill up. I mean, well, that, well, that's people keep malls half empty, you know. Some of that's demographics, but some of that is also technology. The online shopping. The effect of the internet. 20 years, you're not going to see a Sears store, I don't think. 10 years. No, I don't. I remember. But by the way, John, I do agree with you because I thought Safely sort of in a great place for a right <laughs> Safely sort of crossing the line to us. And it's still made. Now that it's actually developed, you never know. It may actually oh, turn still could be. Those, those buildings are cheap to tear down. <laughs> yeah. And I think he's still trying to sell off one, at least one of the lots. That's the something idea. Yeah. Oops. Somebody buys it for the right price. Yeah, for sale. Yeah. I can only have for sale too. You want some? I'm good right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Make a motion with Jerry. Jeez. Uh, Neil's going to second that, right? I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.